their eyes. Picture yourself in the most remote and wild place you have ever been. What do you see? What do you hear? I guarantee you, no matter how alone you feel in this moment, you are never truly alone, because there is an abundance of life all around you. Nature is a microcosm of the life and death we experience in our daily lives. I believe that an excerpt from Annie Dillard's Pilgrim at Tinker Creek perfectly illustrates this idea. It begins like this. A couple of summers ago, I was walking along the edge of an island to see what I could see in the water, and mainly to scare frogs. Frogs have an inelegant way of taking off from an invisible position along the bank just ahead of your feet, in dire panic, emitting a froggy yike and splashing into the water. Incredibly, this amused me, and incredibly, it amuses me still. As I walked along the grassy edge of the island, I got better and better at seeing frogs both in and out of the water. I learned to recognize, slowing down, the difference between in the texture of light reflected from the mud bank, water, grass, or frog. Frogs were flying all around me. At the ed end of the island, I noticed a small green he was exactly half in and half out of the water, looking like a schematic diagram of an amphibian. And he didn't jump. He didn't jump. I crept closer. At last, I knelt on the island's winter-killed grass, lost, dumbstruck, staring at the frog in the creek just four feet away. He was a very small frog with wide, dull eyes. And just as I looked at him, he slowly crumpled and began to sag. The spirit vanished from his eyes as if snuffed. His skin emptied and drooped. His very skull seemed to collapse and settle like a kicked tent. He was shrinking before my eyes like a deflated football. I watched the taut, glistening skin on his shoulders rock and rumple and fall. Soon part of his skin, formless as a pricked balloon, lay in floating folds like bright scum on top of the water. It was a monstrous and terrifying thing. I gaped, bewildered, appalled. An oval shadow hung in the water behind the drained frog. Then the shadow glided away. The frog skin, ba skin bag started to sink. I read about the giant water bug, but never seen one. Giant water bug is really the name of a creature, which is an enormous, heavy-bodied brown bug. It eats insects, tadpoles, fish, and frogs. Its grasping forelegs are mighty and hooked inward. It seizes a victim's victim with these legs, hugs it tight, and paralyzes it with enzymes injected during a vicious bite. That one bite is the only bite it ever takes. <coughs> Through the puncture, shoot poisons that dissolve the victim's muscles and bones and organs, all but the skin, and it's all but the skin, and through it, the giant water bug sucks out the victim's body, reduced to a juice. This event is quite common in warm freshwater. The frog I saw was being sucked by a giant water bug. I had been kneeling on the island grass when an unrecognizable flap of frog's, frog skin settled on the creek bottom, swaying. I stood up, brushed the knees of my pants. I couldn't catch my breath. 